Perhaps you've already seen our video on the microscopic world of analog. And if you have, you would have learned that the perturbations in the groove wall that we can resolve through our speakers and headphones can be measured in the nanometer region. And we really mean the single digit nanometer region. Now this is a microscopic world. One nanometer, well, there are a million of those in the thickness of your credit card. So just to put that in perspective. So we've got a device that's as sensitive as this, this turntable is as sensitive as it is. Then we wanna make sure that external vibrations don't make their way to the cartridge. We want the cartridge to remain immeasurably still. That's the tone arms function. And uh, we wanna make sure that any vibration coming through the floor and the rack and the, the structure don't make its way to the turntable or it will become part of your noise floor. Most of us have this to one degree or another. In fact, almost we all do to some degree or another. And we're, most of us aren't even aware of it. That is unless footfalls around your, um, your, your turntable rack area are obviously audible to you. The solution to avoiding this mechanical noise reaching your cartridge is to decouple the turntable system from the rack that it's on. And I want to talk about what it means to decouple because there's a lot of really bad information out there on it. Items like this, a spike or a cone or any footer that's rigid does not decouple. This is one of the reasons why engineers laugh at audiophiles because we make claims like, for example, a spike is a mechanical diode. It only lets energy in one way. Uh, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. Um, but this is a claim that has been made and in some circles continues to be made. Um, now, that doesn't mean that introducing a spike or a rigid footer won't change the sound. It will because it changes the mechanical impedance between the payload, the turntable, and the support that it's on. So it'll change the sound, but it's not decoupling it. It could even improve it. This can definitely happen, but it's by means only of changing the mechanical impedance. Definitely energy still travels both ways. The way to decouple your turntable system has to be through the use of compliant means. Compliance, like things like this, Norman Varney's AV room service, his uh, EVPs. These are great. I've put them under so many things, certainly your speakers and subwoofers, but turntables too. Items like this are designed to filter out mechanical energy down in a single digit hertz. Whereas rigid items, even if they have mechanical damping properties inside of them, can still, they, they can still act as a high pass filter, um, but they won't take care of the low frequency noise, which is more abundant than the higher frequency noise in our application. There's other far more expensive alternatives to isolation, such as the minus K or the seismion, both of which we have here in the lab. These are machines designed to isolate um, electrons microscopy uh, machines from the laboratory environment. The point of this video here is to communicate the fact that if you are using a rigid footer between your turntable and the support surface that it's on, you are not decoupling at all. Any filtering will be relegated only to higher frequencies, not to lower frequencies. And if you aren't using compliant means to get the job done, well, you are not filtering out lower frequencies. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Until next week on the next Sound Bites. Enjoy Analog Forever.